I'm going to share with you the exact formula that Oscar, Emmy, and Tony winning costume designers utilize to create their designs. Hi! I hope everybody's having a lovely week. We're going to be talking about the actual costume design process. But really quick, I know my audio has not been stellar. I used this lapel mic that I got off of like an Amazon like Prime Day sale. I think it cost me $11, but I ordered a new one. I invested this time. So hopefully next week's video should be much better. And I have such a cool topic to talk about next week. But anyways, this process is the blueprint. Theoretically, everybody uses this process, but it looks different for everybody. Some people more heavily draw their inspiration from specific steps. And although I'm presenting it in a linear format, the process is very cyclical. You're never gonna move from one step to the next in the process without having to go back. Basically, we're all individual artists. We all have different tastes, we all have different aesthetics, but these core steps I'm gonna present to you are like the core ones. These are what constitute a costume design. I also am qualified to talk about this, I promise. <laughs> I have a bachelor's degree in costume design and technology, and I've been working professionally in costumes for about five years. I currently work in costumes for themed entertainment, but I've designed theater, dance, opera, and I'd really like to get into film and TV. Let's talk about design. Analysis. No matter what media you're designing, you are going to want to become an expert in the material. If it's a film or a play, you're going to want to read the script. If it's an opera or a music video, you're going to want to hear the music. If it's a dance, you're going to want to see the choreography. For this video, I'm going to use a scripted performance as my example. The very first thing you have to do is read the script. And you're going to read this as a spectator, not a designer. This will give you a clearer first emotional impression. Get a notepad, make a note of your emotional responses, they'll come in handy later. Just a note, you're never going to read the script just one time. Edith Head, who's one of the most decorated costume designers of all time, having won eight Academy Awards in the costume design category, said she read the script seven times before she even started designing. The analysis stage is crucial as this is your opportunity to understand the world that you're creating and its inhabitants. Where does the story take place? Obviously, fashion differs geographically, culturally, religiously. So nailing down where you are, even if it's not explicitly mentioned in the script, is really important. When does the story take place? Again, fashion changes pretty drastically throughout time. So you need to nail down where your story takes place so that you have a solid place to start your research. Even if it's one of those stories that takes place outside of space and time, you want to make a note of this so you can discuss it with your director later. What is the social climate like? What is their economic situation like? Are they rich? Are they poor? Are they lower working class? Do classes exist in this society? What is the political climate like? Are they more progressive? Do they live in an oppressive regime? Do they live in a dystopian nightmare? This one is really important because this actually dictates a lot about how your characters are dressed, particularly how their clothing is acquired. What sort of media do your characters ingest? What art do they like? What music do they listen to? Have they seen any good movies recently? It's almost like building up a new relationship, right? You're getting to know these people, their likes, their dislikes, how they move about in the world. You're also going to make note of any logistical questions that you have. Who is in what scene? How many costume changes does everybody have? Do they have time to change clothes? Are there any costumes mentioned specifically in the script? Every project is going to require something a little bit different, but that's a pretty good outline to get you started. Research. You're going to need to do a lot of research. This is where the art starts. You're going to answer all of the questions that you gathered in the analysis stage with both evocative and historical research. You can start with evocative or you can start with historical, but you're going to end up doing both, even if you gravitate towards one or the other. Evocative research is anything that you feel speaks to the story in a more abstract or esoteric way. This could be a painting that you feel has the same mood or feeling of the story, or a song that you think sounds like the story. Or maybe even it's fabric that, like, feels like the story. You gotta kind of flex your creative muscles here. Historical research is exactly what it sounds like. You want to know what was going on in the world at the time of the story. Who was in power? Who were the style icons? Was there a global pandemic happening? 
All of that information can inform your design in some way. When it comes to costumes, however, you're gonna be looking at historical garments, museum collections, vintage fashion plates, other media that takes place at the same time. You're probably going to familiarize yourself with all of the fashion or interior designers of that time. This is really where you're nailing down the set of rules you're playing by and how you plan to break those rules. 100% historical accuracy is very rarely the goal of design. It's usually a really specific choice made really early on by the entire creative team. The only example I can really think of in modern media is Robert Eggers' movies such as The Witch or The Northman. He uses historical accuracy as a sort of lens to tell the story through. In my opinion, you should be defining the line between historical accuracy and what looks good to the contemporary viewer's eye. This will help your audience still relate to the piece. Design communication. Now that you have the direction that you're going in, you're going to have to communicate that to the director, the producers, and the other members of the creative team. The most common way to do that is with costume renderings. These are detailed colored drawings of what the finished look will look like on camera or on stage. They also usually have fabric swatches attached to them to show what the costume will be made out of if you plan on creating the costume. If you are less confident in your drawing ability, all hope is not lost. Concept artists and illustrators are actually way more prevalent in costume departments today. Sitting down with a concept artist or illustrator with your ideas and your research they can take all of that, use their skill set to give you some incredible visual communication tools for your team. Just make sure you pay them adequately for their amazing work. There are a lot of costume designers that actually don't draw at all. Jenny Bevan is another incredibly decorated costume designer responsible for iconic designs like Mad Max Fury Road, A Room with a View, and Cruella. While she was a guest on the Designing Hollywood podcast, she mentioned how she doesn't like how concrete costume sketches are. She prefers to let her research guide her shopping and swatching, and she works really closely with her makers and artisans on the films that she works on. Your other option here is collage or character boards. Here's an example of one of mine that I've made. A well-constructed character board can share mood, texture, color. It's just as powerful as any sketch. Realization. Last, but most certainly not least, you need to bring your designs into real life. They need to be real costumes for people to wear. Take a look at all of your designs. Can these pieces be bought at a store? Can you rent them from a collection? How many of them are specialized enough that they need to be made from scratch? And all of these questions will be answered by your budget. I've heard it several times in my career, there's never enough money and there's never enough time. And both of those things are completely true. So while you may want every single look to look exactly like every illustration that you have, chances are you don't have the money to make every single piece from scratch. Realizing a costume from page to stage can be a whole other video. If you'd really like a video on how costumes are realized, leave me a comment below. So there's your quick overview on the costume design process. But like I said, I have something so special in store for next week. Something really kind of cool and witchy to start off spooky season. And I have a lot of cool ideas for spooky season in general. But I'm totally open to your ideas. Leave me a comment, always. So please, it would mean the whole planet to me if you like and subscribed. And until next time, bye bye